Hello and welcome to today's the July Dibble webinar uh, called Building Brighter Futures Relationship Education with Non-Custodial Parents. And I apologize, this is Kay Reed. I apologize for uh, the glitches we're having. Uh, some gremlin has attacked our webinar system. So, um, but I think we're, we're here and ready to go. So uh, today, we have with us, uh, I'm Kay Reed, I'm the Executive Director of the Dibble Institute. I'm speaking to you from Berkeley, California. I've been doing this since the early 90s uh, when Charlie Dibble turned to me and said, would you lead this organization? So I've been privileged to do this work for over 20 years now. And I have with me uh, Vera Bennett, uh, sorry, Vera Ashley Potter, sorry, Vera Ashley Potter from the LA County Child Support Services Department. Hi, Vera. Hello, how are you? Good afternoon. And how long have you been with child support? I have been with LA County for 33 years and I've been with child support for 26 years. Wow. And what are you doing yes. now? I am a supervising child support officer in our headquarters here in Commerce, California. I supervise a team of 10 child support officers. We handle the customer service um, interview area of our public contact office. Great. So Vera is, a, is, is part of our uh, pilot project here, Building Brighter Futures, and we're thrilled to have her along. So thank you, Vera. You're welcome. Now today, uh, the webinar, uh, you might want to jot down this number, the phone number, and the access code in case something happens to your computer. Um, it happens from time to time. So uh, please if you, if you can't get on with your computer, you can always come in by, via the phone. Uh, you're all muted, but we'd love to hear your questions, uh, especially uh, at the end of the broadcast. We're going to be asking questions all the way along, uh, and you can answer those in the questions box or raise your hand or answer our poll. Most importantly, uh, this webinar will be uh, archived by next Monday. Uh, on our site, and it's a great way to, for you to go back uh, and, and review it, to share it with colleagues, or to, if you're, for instance, working in a fatherhood or marriage program, share it with your child support colleagues you might want to work with. So, so those are some of the housekeeping rules, uh, tips, let me think. And I'm sad, uh, sadly, Kathy uh, Guidry is not here with us. She's normally our engineer, but I think, uh, anyway, maybe that's part of the issue is having too many uh, dibble people on this. So um, it, so let's go. Vera and I have done this, uh, this presentation a couple times, uh, most recently with the um, Cal Child Support Directors Association here in California and also at the Fathers and Families um, Coalition of America conference. So we, uh, we found it very well received and we wanted to make it available to a wider audience. Let me give you a little bit of background on the Dibble Institute. As I said before, we were started by Charlie Dibble. Charlie was an engineer by trade. When he retired, he started doing a lot of youth work. Um, I was lucky enough to be one of those youth he worked with at the time. Later in his life, he attended his great niece's wedding, and we don't know what he said to her, but in response, uh, she said to him, oh, don't worry, Uncle Charlie, it's just my first wedding. And for those of you who haven't heard this story before, your eyebrows may have gone up, you might have had a swift inhalation of breath there, thinking, no way, <laughs> on, your, on your wedding day. So Charlie, being a straight-ahead, fix-it kind of guy, um, who had also seen the trajectory of his young friends office, often change when their parents' marriages got a little rocky, uh, decided he could make a difference and he could fix this. So he gathered six of us around his table, dining room table. This was in the mid-80s. And he talked about, uh, after having spoken with researchers of the day, how there was lots of good research going on, but little was being done to translate that research for adolescents and information adolescents could use. So Charlie really set us up on our, on our mission, which was equipping young people with the skills and knowledge they need to leave, lead healthy romantic lives now and in the future. And we do that by translating research into teaching tools that we then make available uh, to others. And I, I've, I see the list and we, I see some familiar faces 
uh, our familiar names on our listening to this webinar. And so a big shout out to you who, who already uh, are in the Dibble fold and for the rest of you who will hopefully uh, do the same. So the Dibble Institute currently, uh, now 20 years later, we've published about 12 programs over the years. Uh, some of them are on the National Registry of Evidence-Based Programs and Practices. They've been through exhaustive research. And with the new marriage grants and fatherhood grants, we look forward to even more research on them. Our programs are used in all 50 states uh, and overseas. Um, and in the last two years, by our conservative estimates, we believe with the help of others, we don't do direct delivery of services, but we, we work through agencies and schools and youth serving organizations. We've reached uh, approximately, we being all of us, 170,000 young people, which is an incredible reach. So we're really, really thrilled with that. Uh, one of our uh, key values is that we believe in research. We believe uh, that we need to base everything we do in what is most recent and current in the field. So from time to time, we change, we shift. For instance, uh, in the last couple of years, we shifted uh, as new information came out about um, cohabitation. Uh, we shifted there. And so we, we shift back and forth, but really uh, only as research changes. And we really stay focused on the research. We're independent. Uh, there's nothing uh, behind uh, the, the curtain like in Oz. We, um, we believe in stable, healthy families. Uh, that's a key value of ours. And that being said, you know, there are, we're not anti-divorce. There are obviously times when people should get divorced with high conflict, um, abusive relationships, abusive of self, others, substances. Those should, you know, blow, go away for sure. Uh, we also recognize that there are thousands upon thousands of amazing single parents doing their best every day, doing incredible work. And we by no means mean disrespect to those amazing people. But even they would say it's really hard raising kids by yourself and wish in some cases that they had made different choices. So, um, you know, we're, we, we believe in healthy, stable families, but we understand. so. We want to make sure there's no abuse involved, and we also understand that there's lots and lots of single parents doing amazing work every day. Finally, we believe that all young people and all people should be treated with respect, and that all relationships uh, can use, can get better with relationship skills. So in our materials, in our curricula, uh, there's no assumption of the gender of your partner, and we also include scenarios uh, that include gay and lesbian scenarios. So they're very inclusive um, and can be used or, or not used depending on your uh, community, community values. So Vera, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, Los Angeles County Child Support Services? I will, thank you, thank you. Well, for those of you that don't know, Los Angeles County is the largest county in the state of California. Excuse me. Um, and our program, Child Support Services, or you may hear me say the word CSSD, which is an acronym for our department, is actually the largest child support program in the country. We serve a population of about 200, I'm sorry, our population in LA County is more than 2 million. Our department has four full time courtrooms. We have over 300 active cases, 300,000 active cases. We have six offices in LA County, Commerce, Encino, South Los Angeles, Torrance, West Covina, and our intergovernmental office that is housed also here in Commerce. Um, our caseload provides for over 309,000 children and our caseload that we collect child support for. I'm sorry, and so that's a basic overview of how large LA County our department is and the customers that we serve on a daily basis. Right, yeah, no, the people in LA child, uh, child support services have as many cases as all of New York State. And so that mm -hmm. means for sure they're bigger than Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, so, so LA you know, could be frankly its own country. There's 10 million people in that county, so it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vera. Uh, so 
we can all agree. I looked at the list to saw who was coming to this webinar. Lots and lots of people working with uh, parents and fathers and, and marriage as well as social services and schools and child support offices. You know, too many, we can all agree that there are just way too many kids being uh, raised in single family homes today. Um, and it, and you can see from the picture I chose, you know, that's, it's not always easy on those kids. And, and on the other side, it's really hard. It's challenging for men, especially. And so we're, we well, we talk about non-custodial parents and we serve both men and women who might be non-custodial parents. Really, we're primarily in the 90, you know, eight percentile speaking about men. And we know that, that many men who want to be uh, good dads, responsible dads, really find it challenging for a variety of reasons. Uh, so we're trying to, to, uh, to put those two things together, children without fathers, fathers who want to be with their kids, and yet there's barriers to that. And, and we think this Building Brighter Futures program um, has some real attraction, some real legs in terms of making those two things uh, better. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about from a very high level uh, the, um, let's see, mm -mm. Uh, we want to go over the partnership between LA and uh, Child Support Services. But I have, I have a couple of uh, show of hands questions to ask you. So by a show of hands, how many of you work for a Child Support Services Department? So how many of you draw a paycheck that is signed uh, you know, by the child support people. Look here. One hand. Two, three, four. Okay, so uh, four out of 56, so slightly less than 10% of you uh, are with child support. Okay, the next question, put, I'll put down your hands. Mm -hmm. um, do you work with child support? So not that you're working for, but does the work you do involve getting referrals from child support or somehow, you know, having child support come and talk to your agency or people about how child support works. How many of you work with child support? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, six. Okay, so some of you currently have a relationship with child support. Okay, hands are down. So the last, uh, well, another question is, how many of you would want to start working with child support services? How do you think that do you think that's a good venue for the services you offer? Ooh, waiting for those hands to go up. Oh, more, more, more. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so a bunch of you wish you could have a relationship with child support services. And um, do any of you actually currently provide services? for either fathers or non-custodial parents through your agency work. A couple of you, four, five, six, okay, good. Okay, well we have a nice blend here of people who are doing it, those who want to do it, uh, those who actually are, are uh, in the child support services. So thank you very much, put down all the hands. So we're gonna talk about this um, from three levels. Uh, that family, for, here are the three points, so stand by, here they are. Family formation and love lives matter. That's point number one. Number two, non-custodial parents can be better parents when their relationships are better. And three, we're going to talk about building brighter futures and how that program and how oh, you can integrate what we learned into your programming. So that's today's, uh, today's agenda. So the first point, how you set up your love life is not neutral. How you set up your family life is not neutral to you and your children. Lots of times we think, oh, whatever you do, no big deal. Let, you know, it'll work out. Really, there are better ways than others. But let's take a step back and just acknowledge that developmentally as human beings, um, we, we develop romantic lives and that's a normal part of growing up. You go from a focus on your family to a focus on your peers to a focus on a romantic partner, to a family of your own. And so this is not abnormal, obviously. It's just part of growing up. But lots of times, and currently now, people um, believe that young people don't want a, a good family life. And yet there's a great uh, study that's been, or a survey that's been going on for at least 30 years 
think it's called Focus on the Future. It's out of the University of Minnesota. And they ask young people a bunch of questions. And one is, how, how important is a good marriage and family life to you? And with astonishing regularity over the last 30 years, young ladies who are a senior in high school, so 18-year-olds, are answering that in the affirmative, extremely important, like at the rate of 81 or 82 percent. And uh, the, the guys at like 71, 72 percent. So very high numbers of young people uh, want a good marriage and a family life. And this holds true when you, when you ask young people um, in inner cities and, and, and young people who are low resource. They, they want this. They don't necessarily know how to have it. They may not be confident, but it's something that they want. And so it's, it's reassuring uh, to me in the field of marriage education. And for many, I'm sure that we're helping people achieve their goals. We're not imposing anything on them that they don't already want. So let me just put an aside here. Since I'm also the engineer on this webinar, if I don't answer your question right away, I'll get to it. But um, it's just me today. Okay, so we, we will also acknowledge that you know, Ozzie and Harriet are no longer the model, right? That uh, on this slide you can see, and I'll take my fancy red pen here, this line here, the, the, blue, the one at the top, Starts at 87% of young of children living with their parents, goes down to 64%. So a 23% drop between 1960 and 2014. That's parent children living with their parents. And on the other hand, this is this line is the one of children living with their mother only, goes from 8% in 1960 to 23.7%. So almost two to how many is that? So if you go from, you know, one to three, you know, that's 60% increase. Is that right? Or 200% increase. Anyway, I was gone from school that day. Anyway, <laughs> but you can see this is a phenomenon and we can all acknowledge it right now in the United States, over half of young people, our children are born to unmarried mothers. So it's a big deal. And we, ha we, um, there's some great reports out on that. I, one from the campaign called Not Yet, which is a good one to read if you haven't already. Oops. That, so now I'm going to launch a poll. Hope you didn't see that. Um, what percentage, here's my poll. Let's see. What percentage of Americans are, are involved in the child support system? And why don't you answer it how you thought it was before I showed you the answer? <laughs> mm -hmm. So you would answer. How many of you think it's 5, 20, or 33% in, involved in the child support system? Okay. I'm going to close down this poll in just a second. Operators are standing by. Okay. I think we've got them all. I'm going to close the poll. I'm going to share the results. So a third of you think it's 55% in the child support system. 20%, uh, 34%, and 5% uh, believe it's, um, or 11% believe it's it's 5%. Well, this is actually what got us into uh, the child support business in LA, is I went to a meeting with Dr. Golightly and learned that 20% of all Americans are involved in the child support system. So that means custodial parents, non-custodial parents, children. So today, when you go to the grocery store after work, look at the line and count one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Every fifth person on average you see in the world in America is somehow connected to child support. And there's a ton of people who aren't connected to child support who are also custodial or non-custodial parents. So it's a big swath of America that's involved in this. And just for the record, uh, both moms and dads can be custodial parents, but if your children are in the foster system, uh, then you are both non-custodial parents, and then both uh, uh, both parents are then obliged to pay child support. So, news to me. Um, so, child formation or family formation really matters to children. Uh, this is why I'm in this game. Um, we think kids are like really resilient and it's true, you know, they skip and they laugh and they jump, but we're finding that children are much more um, delicate, frankly, fragile uh, than, than we thought. So by a show of hands, 
how many of you have heard of the adverse childhood experiences uh, study? ACEs. Have you heard of ACEs? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Oh, good. A good number of you have, uh, but not but not the majority. So let me um, let me explain that. So so ACEs um, actually comes from California. It's a study from San Diego. Uh, done at one of our large health maintenance organizations ca called Kaiser Permanente. And what uh, Dr. Uh, Folletti, whose first name escapes me at this moment, uh, did was to survey 57,000 Kaiser members and ask them 17 questions about early abuse, uh, neglect, or trauma. So I asked them things like, you know, were you sexually abused? Were you were you uh, physically abused? Were you sexually abused? Were you neglected? Were you hungry? Did you see violence in the home? Did your parents break up? Um, did your, one of your parents have a mental illness? I mean, there's like 17 questions like that. So this broad range of Kaiser patients answered that quest, those questionnaires. And then he correlated those 17 answers to their health conditions. And he found that with patients with more than four uh, ACEs, he was finding that they had a chronic health condition, diabetes, heart condition, blood pressure, obesity, whatever it was. And, and he, this, this, was, this had been confirmed in his own practice where he, someone would come to him with a chronic problem and then reveal that they'd had some early trauma. So he started putting those things together. So we're starting to see early trauma translating into um, into adult health issues. And one of these, it's the second line here. Uh, and if, if you can't see this clearly, I encourage you to go to the uh, ACEs website. I'm sure if you just typed in adverse childhood experiences, you would get there. But young people who have adverse childhood experiences, their brains form, you know, you're in the process when you're a child of having your brain form and all the little neural pathways work well. And kids who have high ACEs, their brains aren't forming the same way in normal, healthy ways um, <clears throat> as, as children without trauma. So it's, it's a big deal, this ACEs. The other uh, thing that is family formation matters to children is when there is multiple partner fertility. It's really complicated for kids. If you're the child number of the... Um, if you're the child of the first dad, right, if you're a peer, this dad, and, and then there's a second child with a different dad, your dad probably is not going to come around very much because it, that, that's hard. And your dad might have started another family. The work of Kathy Eden is really important here because she talks about how there aren't really deadbeat dads and every dad really wants to do the best by his kid. But by the time you have multiple children by multiple mothers, it's really hard to keep in touch with all of them, and they tend to be in touch with their last child. And then if your mom isn't, so now mom's on child number three with a different father, you may not, in the pecking order, be the favorite child. And so it's just another reason why love lives and family formation matters to kids. And finally, if you care about child welfare, if there's any other, you know, uh, Cole, I need to add to this fire. The number one place where children are abused is when there's non-related male DNA in the household. So sure, you can Google uh, bad things dads do, and you'll get some some hits. You Google bad things boyfriends do, and you get a ton more hits. So what women don't realize is you have to be really careful uh, with who you bring into the house. And from the child's point of view, you know, we often are very concerned with, with uh, child, uh, child care facilities, that they don't have a lot of staff turnover because you don't want a lot of turbulence in a young person's life with their caregivers. And if, you, if your dad, uh, you know, if your dad's gone and um, if your dad's gone and you're managing, um, sorry, I got distracted with some questions. If your dad's gone, 
um, and there's another male in the house, you know, that's another set of rules, another, another learning how to navigate the emotional side. I mean, it's just complicated for kids. So adult love lives matters for children. But uh, we're finding out that, um, so who's not, you know what, I would like to do another poll right now. Who can't see the webinar slides? I'm just getting some indication here. Anybody who can't see the webinar slides? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, a ton of you. Oh, I'm so sorry. So um, it's showing on my side. So you might want to log out and log back in. Um, hmm, rats. I apologize. 29% of you, <laughs> according to this. So um, it looks to me like I'm, in theory, doing everything I should be. So if you, <laughs> why don't we first try you guys logging out and then logging back in? And I'll go slow so you can catch back up. Okay. So, um, so uh, you know, oftentimes when we think about parenting education, we um, we think about well you know they need we need to teach parents about disciplining their kids about setting boundaries about you know having good family time and that's all uh, really important but um, we we also know that the parenting relationship the relationship between the co-parents is an important aspect. Of, of parenting and should not be diminished when we think about what is parenting education. Um, so here, for those of you, and let's see, let's wait till everybody logs back in. Lots of people are logging back in. So for those of you who are at agencies and are thinking, you know, what's the silver bullet here? And not that there is ever a silver bullet, but um, parents, here, here's the nut. When parents understand how their children are impacted by the way they form their families. When they can see the world through the eyes of their child, they're motivated to change. There was some seminal work by Dr. Kathy Eden uh, from Harvard University. She wrote the book, uh, Promises I Can Keep. And she um, asked the question of, of young mothers, single moms with multiple children uh, in the welfare system, what is it that they, why did they keep having children? And the answer was uh, they, they had a very simple job description, keep my baby fed and keep my baby clean. Um, when they realized that the babies need more than that, they need enrichment, they need a stable home life, they need a, an attentive parent talking to them, reading to them, et cetera, et cetera, uh, they were motivated to do those things. They just hadn't seen the world through the eyes of their child. So, um, so that, that's, our, that's our big nut here. So before I go on, I want to make sure how many people can, can everybody, who cannot see the screen? Who cannot see the screen? Oh dear. I'm so sorry. Wouldn't you know? Where's Kathy when I need her? <laughs> well, what I can tell you folks is um, if you can't see the screen, this will be archived, so you can come back and you know start at this point. Um, but I don't, I'm not gonna, I don't think I should stop the whole webinar and start all over again. So, oh, but some few people are starting to see the screen, so I'm hopeful it'll all work. Okay, so we'll just keep going bravely forward. Um, the other interesting thing about relationship skills is not only does it make people better parents, it makes them better employees. Uh, we're finding that, uh, you know, we all know very smart, very talented, very gifted people, uh, but who can't find and keep a job. Why? Because they don't have social and emotional intelligence. So the good news about when you teach people relationship skills around their love lives, these translate into skills you need on the job. So it's for those of you who are doing uh, job tra training programs, uh, this is the logic model. According to the Department of Labor, and if you... Uh, if you Google a uh, Department of Labor employability pyramid, uh, this is what you'll find. And down here, um, 
it says interpersonal skills, and over here it says reliability and dependability. And so not only are, are, does the DOL consider interpersonal skills foundational, but it's really hard to be dependable and reliable if you have a really dramatic um, love life, right? So you're coming and going, and there's new people and all. So uh, these, are, these are two things that can really help cement the foundation of a good work life. And finally, uh, we know that healthy relationships create stronger future families. We can help people uh, plan and pace their relationships, think about what they want for the future, uh, make sure that their, their relational life doesn't derail them from meeting their goals. And we also know that when you teach, and this is from a research at University of Puget Sound, when you teach young people, and this was with uh, Hispanic young parents, when you teach them, when they were taught relationship skills, uh, their parent, without even talking about parenting skills, their parenting improved, including their capacity to uh, be more, um, have more emotional management and work better with their children, do less dysfunctional uh, training. So again, uh, having a good relationships, having good relationship skills is really important in being a good parent. So let's talk a little bit here about um, Building Brighter Futures, which is a uh, the project that Dibble and the LA County Child Support Services Department work together. This is funded. Uh, it was a little pilot program we put together with our current funding from the Office of Family Assistance. Uh, we started talking to them two years ago and started classes uh, just uh, well about 18 months ago. We are currently in our eighth class. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about that. Uh, we enroll 10 to 15 participants in a class. We want to keep it a uh, small size, so there's lots of time for interaction. There are eight weeks of instruction from 5.30 to 8, once a week. Uh, we find Tuesdays work well uh, in, in the evening, so 5.30 to 8. Uh, we, have, we, we use the curriculum Love Notes. It's published by Dibble. It's a relationship skills program, and it includes parenting. And we are currently in revisions uh, to include work scenarios and work skills. So we, we'll bring that all together. Um, in, on your panel, there should be a handout uh, page there. And on it, we have the sample lesson from Love Notes, if you'd like to take a look at that. Of course, after you've all listened very attentively to me. <laughs> uh, so we do eight weeks of that. Uh, on one Saturday, we have people complete the serve safe certificate that is a um, a short course taken online through the national restaurant association it is an industry recognized certificate and in california and probably most states everyone has to um, get one before they can get the certificate before they can get a job so having that in your hand makes it much easier for people to get jobs and even though uh, they may already be working they might want a second job. They might want to just, it may just be good to, for home food safety. But we find it uh, really helpful that it improves people's self-esteem when, when they can earn that. Vera, and she will talk about this later, uh, does a class called Child Support 101 when she talks about how the child support system works. We have two instructors, a male and a female, which we find uh, is, a, is great to have both genders uh, represented. Everyone gets a Love Notes journal, their own personal journal, because this ends up being their personal journey uh, to, through relationship skills. We include a light dinner, uh, bus passes, and some uh, attendance incentives. Uh, some of them are financial, and Vera is going to talk about a really important one that uh, child support offices uh, can do on their own. Um, and if you want to learn more about Love Notes, uh, we have a, another webinar where we went over uh, more about what was in Love Notes. So that's the basics of the, of the Building Brighter Futures program. I'm going to uh, ask Vera to talk a little first about how the recruitment works because she's uh, the supervisor of the lobby in the busiest L.A. child support office. Thank you. And I'm obviously, I'm not on the screen, but I know where I should be. But anyway, um, as you said earlier, approximately 18 months ago, um, 
Kathy, uh, Kay and Joanne spoke with Dr. Golightly about an internal partnership with the Dibble Institute for the Building Better Futures program. And the recruitment is done here in our headquarters in Commerce, California, because of course we see the bulk of the participants in our department and we thank you. We see quite a few oh, people. Oh, that was here. operator I'm, error. I'm sorry. I didn't close the poll. Who knew? Okay, sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I apologize. So um, we see a large uh, amount of participants in our office. We stay very, very busy from opening to close, eight to five daily. And I have ten child support officers that interview non-custodial parents, custodial parents each and every day. And so the recruitment process was a good idea to have it here because also the location of we're pretty centrally located and in relationship to where the classes are held, which I'll speak about on the next slide or so, as to where the class is held and the, the participants that come here, the not custodial parents that come into our office, they don't have far to go. We started again, I could say that, about 18 months and we're in our eighth cohort, which we've done pretty well. As you said, we, are, we enroll about 20, 25 people and we usually have an attendance of about between 10 and 15, which is a pretty good rate, that go through completion. Excuse me. And are you going to go to the next slide? Yeah, well, so our, uh, just a, a second about it. So our grant supports a recruiter. That, it, mm -hmm. that is a custodial, uh, non-custodial parent who's been through the class. He sits in the, um, in the office, and, and then he, he works with the lobby staff to, um, to, to recruit people for the program. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, in addition to, as she said, we do have one recruiter in addition to my staff after we complete, uh, complete an interview or prior to interview, a gentleman, Mr. Vila, uh, Venezuela, I'm sorry, Valencia, sits in our lobby area with a table and he has literature about the program. And because he is a graduate from the um, cohort, he's much more equipped and a viable source of information because he knows what it's like he went through it. Uh, he speaks very well about the program and just a very, very good person. So he's very good in recruiting and explaining to the non-custodial parents about the program from beginning to end. In addition to my staff, once we've finished interviewing them, we tell them about the program or prior to the interview, um, all ages, we started again with um, non-custodial parents at the age of 18 to 23, and we went from 18 to 30 and then from 30 to no age limit. As long as they're 18, they should be eligible for the program. One, things that, one of the things that we do tell um, our not custodial parents that most all people have a form of a license, driver's license in particular. Part of the child support program is when you're not compliant with your child support, any license that you hold, driver's license, cosmetology license, teacher credentials, real estate license, etc., your license are subject to be suspended because of not compliance. Because we only what we do with LA County, the incentive that we offer is driver's license. So if you sign up for the class and you attend the very first class, we will do a suppression will send to the state to suppress um, the intent to suspend for 60 days. So it gives them two months to kind of get things together. Hopefully we can get them compliant while they're going through the program or after completion. After they graduate from the program, the six-week class and then the one Saturday class, we will suppress an intent to suspend for six months. So six months is a pretty good amount of breathing space to hopefully they have gained employment or um, still employed but now in a position maybe to earn more money because they've now acquired the um, certificate and maybe working in the food industry to become compliant with their court orders. So that's the one incentive that we can offer. We can't offer much more because of course this is a state program and there are procedures and laws that have to be followed. But this one works really well and it gives the non custodial parents a sense of relief, like, well, I can't drive to the class because my license are suspended. Like, no, your license will be active in, um, for 60 days or for six months. 
All right, so just for those of you who are on this broadcast and thinking, I'd like to work with my child support office, I'd like to offer services, um, this is an important part that they can, that most agencies can bring to the table and doesn't cost anything and is a huge, huge deal. So um, it's, it's a great thing for, for them to do. And then Vera, what do you do on that Saturday? Well, in this lovely building that you see, that is the National Polytechnic College here in Commerce. We utilize that space on one Saturday out of the six weeks. It's usually about the third week in, and it is a full day where they work on their service safe certificate. And prior to that, after they have a nice breakfast, I do a presentation called Child Support 101. Of course, the participants that are in the class are involved with our agency about child support, but some of them don't have a clear understanding of what exactly we do and exactly what's going on with their case. So I give them an overview from the beginning, the middle, and the end, how a child support case starts, why it starts, how we receive re referrals from um, an agency or request of the custodial parent, um, what the different um, remedies are, enforcement remedies that are enacted on their cases if they become not compliant, what can be done when circumstances change in their life, either they've lost a job, their income has changed, um, custody has changed. So I go over that in a PowerPoint presentation, I do Q&A after it's completed and it's very, very helpful. A lot of times the non custodial parents don't want to talk in front of others so they'll wait and ask me questions after the fact. Um, or they'll actually come into our office and they will see me and ask me more questions if they are not really comfortable in that set that setting. But it's a nice building. It's just five minutes away from here, and they are very accommodating on those Saturdays that we're there. Right, and I want to just mention two things that are real, that we found important. One is that that this particular child support <clears throat> department uh, thought it was really best to have the classes off-site in a neutral setting, that going to child support, like, come down here for a class, at least in the L.A. Um, area, was not considered something that people would, like, want to do. So we found a neutral site to hold the classes. And then Vera is a really important part of this. She's very personable. She reaches out to the non-custodial parents. They feel like they have a contact. It's not so scary. They see a human face. And uh, it's a it's a real big deal uh, for them, and we'll show mm -hmm. you the results in a minute. So so mm -hmm. thank you, Vera, for every Saturday you put in. We're grateful. Thank you. So what do NCPs, which uh, for those of you who uh, don't know the lingo, that's non-custodial parents or fathers. What do they what what do they learn? Well, we not only teach them skills, which I used to think were like the most important things. So how do you listen and how do you speak and how do you communicate and how do you solve problems? And that's all really important. But we're also teaching them uh, beliefs and knowledge. So this is an, uh, this graph up here in the, or this chart in the upper right corner is some knowledge we teach them. So what is the difference between love and lust and infatuation? And how do the relationships grow over time? And when you first fall in love, you know that, that, that feeling like your feet don't touch the ground and the life, you know, birds are singing whenever you see your beloved's face. Uh, that's drugs. <laughs> that, that's your brain. They're natural uh, chemicals in your brain uh, making you feel very happy. So it's, it's so good to teach people uh, some of these basics around relationships that then help them navigate their relationships um, going forward. Again, a really, really important part we teach, especially for people with children, is your love life impacts your children. You might think it's yours and yours alone, but actually how you set up your family unit, you know, it's, it's one thing to say to people, young people, like, you'll be poor, you'll be uneducated, you'll be unhappy, and they'll say, oh, it'll be fine, I'm, I'm good now. But if you say your child, this is what happens to people, who, you know, who are children who are born to unprepared young parents, um, and, and there's ways to say it, you just can't, you know, come out probably as strongly, but you can certainly, in, we, in Love Notes, uh, Marlene Pearson has certainly figured out a way to say those things so that young people resonate and they get that it's not just about them, it's about their current children or potential children. Oops. We also um, not only teach, we do teach skills, communication, but also emotional regulation skills. So how do I handle, handle anger? How do I, lots of these young people or people have adverse childhood experiences, 
uh, when you haven't had, have had that background, sometimes it's very hard to get your executive functioning to work in your brain. So how do, how do we trigger, how do we get back into that executive functioning and so you can make clear decisions and not just be act, acting um, without, without any thought? And finally, we spend a lot of time, and this is just a key, uh, again, uh, something else to put in your programs, is you have choices about your relationship. This isn't, relationships just don't have to happen to you. You choose. So here's a great story. Uh, in Sacramento, they're using uh, these materials with uh, TANF, mom, CalWORKs mom, so the other side of the coin. And a CalWORKs mom who'd taken love notes was at a bus stop one day. She's relating this back to her uh, instructor who says, um, um, she said, I'm at the bus stop. A stranger drove by slowly, said, hey, baby, baby, what's your phone? And she said, before I took this class, I would have gotten in the car with him. And now I have had this class. I understand he didn't know my name and didn't know anything about me. So huge, <laughs> that's a huge learning there. That, so it's not just about, you know, we, we teach communication skills, we teach all these skills, but yeah, like it's really important that someone you're in a relationship with, you, they know your name. That would be a good start. So we teach people they can choose. You don't have to get into the car with a stranger. So we are finding that um, Building Brighter Futures helps uh, these non-custodial parents be uh, better parents. It, it's, it's gratifying to see uh, good results. Uh, the first is they're starting to get jobs and comply with child support orders. And I'm just going to read a real quick thing. Uh, we, in our first cohort, we did, uh, we worked with Dr. Bright Sarfo from Columbia University to do a qualitative, uh, research project. Not, not an RCT, just yakking with people, find out what they learned. This is what one person said. What I found out is that it's, and that he meant child support, is so simple. It's the easiest thing you can think of. It's not time consuming. It's nothing. It's a simple phone call. You can get anything you want. They help you out. If anything changes, you call them and they help you out with that. And I didn't know about that formula that they use when they get the parent's information. And that formula determines how much money the child gets. I didn't know that. So we can do a lot in terms of just educating people about child support. And here... Uh, is we, we've, we've run this with 50 people in seven cohorts. So, um, you know, people drop out. <clears throat> so roughly seven or eight per cohort. Uh, Vera, do you want to go over these a little bit? No, you can go over those. Okay. Yeah, I'm... You're good. <laughs> so uh, of the 50 people, so the two ones I like the best are at three o'clock case closed. So that means that you're only a, paying child support when you're not living with your, with your children. So that means that individual moved back in with his children or her children. So that's the best outcome. The next best outcome is that 24% are now employed since taking the program. We can't tell if it was us or we put something in the water in LA County, but nonetheless, 24% are employed and now paying child support. Uh, before the class started, 14% uh, were already paying, and they continue to pay. So uh, that's, that's huge. Then, sadly, 46% aren't paying, can't find 14%. But <clears throat> this one, 24%, if you showed this to your child support office, they would hug and kiss you and ask you how uh, they could help you run these classes. Anyway, so that's that's the the financial results of this program. We also found that parents that, that, that these participants report better communications with their parents, with their co-parent, and this is what one of them said. I learned how to solve problems without using profanity, without having anger, without just handling situations when I'm really upset. Give it like 30 minutes instead of just you know saying something that I really don't mean, and that that's something that will happen between me and her a lot. I would say a lot of mean things to, we would say a lot of mean things to each other that would escalate. She would say something dumb, then I would say something way more dumb. And honestly, I didn't really mean it. I would just get so upset at the moment, but now it's different. Now it's like, I know that I won't say nothing because I care about her feelings now. So that's what they reported about co-parents. We see that they're connecting with their children, which is what we really, really want. 
And here's what one uh, father said. They were trying to show more affection. So he says, now it's different. I feel bad now. I want to hug her. Now she knows the difference because I, she would tell me that I'm like that. I'm a good daddy now that I had time to spend with her. Now I take her to school and I pick her up. So again, parents are motivated when they see uh, outcomes for their children. And then here are some reactions to the whole class. Um, it's completely positive. I think at this point, I'm actually hoping that you guys have a secondary course that I can take, a part two. Uh, honestly, if it came down to it, I wouldn't want it to end today because I know that today is the last day and I would definitely do it again if we ever came back to it again. So we, we know that parents, uh, we can watch them. They tend to stay through the whole program once they get involved. Um, and I think some really fantastic results, if I might say so myself. So I appreciate everybody hanging in there. That was my operator error for the problem with the, um, <clears throat> um, with the um, slides. So I apologize. If you want to see all that, you heard me. But if you want to see the slides, we'll have this up. Um, so we have a question here. So now it's time for questions. So I'm being asked, is recruitment limited to non-custodial parents who are involved with child support services? Um, yes. Uh, well, let's see, kind of. <laughs> we recruit at child support. But um, what we find is that people come to the first class and the second and onward classes, they bring in their cousins and friends and buddies and say, this is really a great class. You got to come to it. So in our current pilot, we are accepting they need to be non-custodial parents, but they don't necessarily need to have a case. Is that right, Vera? You know? That's correct. That is correct. We do. Initially, we see non-custodial parents that have an active child support case, but since the initial class, we've had just, matter of fact, a couple of weeks ago, a few non-custodial non parents, but they did not have child support cases, were in and asking questions about right. this new cohort that's going on now. And the good, this, yeah, the current class we're doing in Spanish, and mm -hmm. we actually hope that when people understand why you do child support and why children need to be supported, both emotionally and financially by their parents, that we will get more parents to comply and more and more child support offices are offering job services and offering social services so we think it's a real benefit uh, let's see do participants have to graduate have to participate in every class to be considered graduates of the program um, I think we let people have one night off you know that they, they can be gone one night we we do try to uh, schedule some pickups and and have them um, uh, you know, get the content another way, but we're not, uh, you know, I, th I think we allow some, some absences to happen without, without penalty. Where do we sign up for these classes? <laughs> well, if you live in Los Angeles County <laughs> and you're a non-custodial parent, you can go run right down to Commerce. Uh, actually, I'm j all joking aside, uh, our grant funding is completed for this uh, for this program, we're we're running one last cohort. Uh, we've applied uh, to the federal government for another round of funding for this kind of program. Uh, what I found through the years of working with the wonderful people at LA and also um, their colleagues, uh, we've been talking to people in Orange County, is that child support doesn't have a lot of leeway in terms of using their own money to put these classes together. At least at this point. And let me just say for the record, I'm going to show you my email at the end. And if you want to talk to me about ways to maybe change that, uh, to, to do some education of your um, federal representatives and senators, um, I'd be happy to chat with you off, off of this webinar. And you'll see my email in a few minutes. Um, but if you can bring the funding, if you can bring the resources to the child support office, they will help with recruitment. They will help with like the license suppression um, so that they will do some very important uh, benefits uh, or incentives that only they can do. But at this point, it doesn't feel to me like they can um, actually financially support the program. But, you know, I would encourage you to go to your county child support office. Talk to them. I'm happy uh, on our on our um uh, the handouts, one of the handouts is our uh, logic model for this child support program. 
and another is our executive summary of the work that Bright Sarfo did. So those are tools you could take along with the sample lesson to your child support office and have a conversation about what they can do. Is the program offered in other uh, in languages other than English? Currently, it's offered in Spanish, and uh, you know it can be offered in any program, <laughs> any any uh, language someone is, else is willing to translate it into. <laughs> but currently, it's just English and Spanish. Uh, can the curriculum be used for teen parents? Oh, what a great question! Yes, uh, this is a program. You know, currently, uh, it was actually developed for teen parents, 16 to 24. We're finding that it has great uptake all the way. That's why, as, as uh, Vera said, we're now accepting. It, it doesn't feel like a teen program. So adults take it, and they're just fine. And in fact, uh, in Detroit, they're teaching the, the love notes to the ninth grade health classes. So uh, those aren't even teen parents. But it assumes you're sexually active, and it assumes uh, you're um, uh Probably parenting or where you, the kind of uh, environment you live in, it's very common uh, to be a parent. How many are sessions are offered in a year? Uh, Vera, I think we do four a year, right? About yes. Once, once every four quarter. And, and I, tell us how you start, we start recruiting six weeks in advance? About six weeks in advance and we recruit in through the second week of the of the uh, cohort. So because we have some people that will come in and we just started a class on that Tuesday and usually the second Tuesday or the second week of the program we will allow new people but after that they've gotten too far into the curriculum and we don't want them to miss the um, core components that are offered. Right, <clears throat> right. And we um... I was going to say that our recruiter not only sits in the lobby and we have flyers and w w enrolls people and all, but uh, he will call or text them the night before if they don't show mm -hmm. up. He'll call and text. So, so we have someone kind of keeping track of them, and that's part and of. And he our... actually, and he actually attends the classes as well. Right. That's a good point. He's the host, so he actually is responsible for. We have pizza delivered, so he sets it out. Uh, he helps with setup and take down of the class. Uh, so the host is an important, uh, the, the recruiter host is an important part of the program. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions. So for now, uh, so I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, here is my email address. Again, uh, apologies. They normally don't let uh, me run these <laughs> for good reason. <laughs> so. So, uh, but if you have questions about how to work with child support, what you, what, how you can help be on the team to work on some of these uh, re rewrites of the child support rules in order to make family education, relationship education easier, please feel free to email me. Uh, here's Vera. Uh, if you're in ch the child support world and you want to talk to Vera about, uh, about that, uh, about what she does, uh, please feel free to to uh, write her, and the webinar will, will be available uh, by, assume, <laughs> by next Monday, assuming no further operator errors. Uh, keep in touch. We love people keeping in touch. But And if you could do only one thing on here, uh, join our newsletter. We, we published it monthly. We don't bug you in between times. Uh, but, but if you want to keep informed of grant opportunities, research, uh, what's going on in the field. We, we find free tools. We tell you about what we're doing and updating. Uh, go to our website, uh, dibbleinstitute.org. You can, you can um, join there, or you can uh, text Dibble to the number on the screen. And, um, and we'd, love to, we'd love you to be in the family, as it were. So our uh, August webinar we are finding a lot of people coming new to Dibble. Some of you today might be new to Dibble. I know last month we had a webinar with lots of new people. So we, the August webinar is going to be put on by the staff of Dibble, and we're going to talk to you, kind of lift the hood, go under the hood, and tell you all the things that are going on in Dibble, what we call Dibble land. Um, talk to you about our new, new program revisions, how our website works, where the three, free materials are, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, you'll be able to, we'll be sending out an invitation for that in the next uh, week or so, and you'll also be able to register for that from our website. So we are thrilled that you were able to come today. Um, appreciate your patience uh, with this uh, novice at webinars. 
and I look forward to seeing you next month. Thanks so much. Take care. Thank you. Bye -bye.